Now he goes on to say, I would that they were even cut off which trouble you. I wish these Judaizers were removed from you. Verse 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. That's something to remember. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now we have given to us here something that I think is very important. There are three methods of trying to live the Christian life. Two of these methods will not work. One is a life of legalism, as he's been talking about that. That won't work. And the other is the life of license. Paul discussed that in Romans. Now that we are saved by grace, does that mean that we can continue in sin? And Paul gives the answer, God forbid, you can't live in sin, be a Christian. Now you may fall into sin, but you're going to get out. The prodigal son can get in the pig pen, but he never lived in the pig pen. That was not his forwarding address. He left it. And therefore, the Christian life is not a life of legalism, and it's not a life of license. What is it? Well, he's discussing it here. It's a life of liberty. Now, Paul will give in the remainder of this chapter the modus operandi of living by liberty. The life of legalism not only includes the Ten Commandments, but a set of regulations that Bible believers follow today. They tell you where you can go, where you can't go. They tell you what you can do and what you cannot do. I remember we had a very wonderful woman who was a Bible teacher in Texas. She came to our town, did a wonderful work teaching the Bible. A dear little saint came up to me one day. She says, do you think she's really a Christian? She uses makeup. Well, who in the world ever said that is a test? And I said, well, that woman, I think, is living under liberty. And she may be using a little too much makeup. But I said, when you get her age, you probably you know, spread it on a little thicker than you do before. Now, I said, candidly, I don't think it helps her too much, but she has liberty in Christ. Whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, I won't commend you to God. Whether you use makeup or don't use it. And some women do look a little better with it, by the way. And some of them look a little worse for using too much of it. But I'm no authority on that. Now, that's not my business to tell people that. I never would preach on that. Now, notice what he says. They can keep all these things, Paul is saying, and still not live the Christian life. Did you know that you could keep every commandment and you could follow all that the fundamentalists put out for us to live today? You still wouldn't be living the Christian life. We're going to see what that is before we finish with this chapter. There are the antinomians who think they can do as they please and live the Christian life. These are extreme as the legalists. And the Christian life's not either one. It's liberty in Christ. Now, he says here, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And as we said last time, this is what the gospel of grace does for the believer. What is it? Well, you can't do what you want to do. <laughs> it is grace, not law, that frees us from doing wrong and allows us to do right. Grace does not set us free to sin, but it sets us free from sin. You see that today the believer should desire to please God, not because he must please him like a slave, but because he's a son and he wills to please his father. He does what God wants, not because he fears to do otherwise like an enemy, but because he wants to do it for God's his friend. God is the one who loves him. And he serves God not because of any pressure from without like the law, but because of a great principle within even the life of Christ that's within us and that we love him. And he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I've often wondered, suppose one of the apostles said, we don't love you. I think he'd have said, forget the commandments then. The whole basis is a love relationship to him. The law, therefore, never could bring us to that place. It was negative to begin with. It was a negative goodness. And that's the kind of goodness a great many people have today. And, oh, if I could only get this through to a great many of the saints today. Your negative goodness, friends, is a legal goodness. You can say, I don't do this, I don't do that. But for the name of heaven, what do you do? 
I know a lot of the saints. I've been pastor. They could get up and say, well, I don't go to a dance and I don't go to the movies. And they could also say, I don't go to church on Sunday night and I don't go to church in the midweek service. I know that because it didn't come. My friend, may I say to you that the law only gave a negative goodness, and it never rises to the sphere of positive goodness where one does things to please God for the very love of pleasing Him. He wants us to serve Him on that kind of basis.